Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. My next guest has many accomplishments to her name. She earned a bachelor's degree from an accredited college, achieved a black belt in karate, won platinum status on a national dance stage, lobbied for legislation for a state capital, and was crowned Miss Connecticut in 2011 state pageant. Morgan Amaron, Miss Connecticut 2001, well, 2011 has also written a children's book titled Madison's Journey about an 11 year old girl whose friend is diagnosed with cancer. This book as well as her initiative through her platform of cancer awareness education has changed the lives of many people. Welcome to the show Morgan. Thank you for having me. So the first thing I have to ask you a lot of people wonder is oh, we see the the glam and the glitz on the yes. TV with the pageant and I don't think they really air it enough locally here but uh, uh, so before we talk about your book what was it like? being at Miss America. Well, the best way I can describe the Miss Connecticut experience and the, the time I had at Miss America was, this is absolutely an unmatched opportunity and it's an opportunity to make an impact. What people don't realize is the Miss America organization is the largest provider of scholarships for women in the world. So yes, there's glitz and yes, there's glam and there's a lot of fun things that go on at, the, at Miss America pageant week, but we pride ourselves on being a scholarship organization. All of us have worked so incredibly hard to achieve a higher education and to really work with our platforms um, really to make an impact so that's what the Miss America organization is all about and why I chose to get involved. It's got to be a lot of work uh, they got you hustling and bustling going from because once you get crowned yes. you've got all this work to do right? Absolutely so I was actually an accountant that's what I do for a living and I left my job for this year to be a full-time Miss Connecticut so every day I have one or two events I've traveled <laughs> I think I put about 20,000 miles on my car so far this year. I'm in, you know, different parts of the state. I've met people from different areas and different organizations that I otherwise would have never had the opportunity to meet. And I like to say that the crown is like a microphone because it really has given me a voice and it's given people a reason to listen. So the, the, what they have you doing is you've probably got to make a lot of appearances because yes. they want to have their picture taken with yes. you because you're somewhat of a celebrity. <laughs> now, yes. how much of your time do you get to spend on your initiative, on your platform, as opposed to all this publicity stuff they want you to do? Yes, most of my time actually is spent on my platform. I have a lot of speaking engagements and most of my time is spent in elementary schools because of my book. But I'm also the spokesperson for the Miss Connecticut organization as well as Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, which is the national platform of the Miss America organization. So I spend about a third of my time on my platform work and then the rest of the time promoting the organization and our national platform. It, it's got to be fun. Some of it's got to be absolutely, fun. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It's, it's really an experience. You know, people joke, you actually left your full-time job in the middle of a recession. <laughs> Why would you do that? And I said, you know, this opportunity is something that I'll never forget. And the networking and the people that I've met are, you know, something that I wouldn't trade for the world. Okay. So you wrote Madison's Journey. Yes. Um, excellent book. Thank I, you. I, I read through it and I can see how it would uh, really make a difference in some choice. So first of all, why did you write this? Well, in 2004, I lost my grandfather to cancer, and I had no idea what was going on. I didn't realize why his death only came three months after his diagnosis. So after some research, um, I started to work with the American Cancer Society and realized that people weren't educated about the disease. So I created a program in high schools and middle schools across the state, and people sort of said, well, how young is too young to talk to your child about cancer? And my answer to that was, it's never too young to teach your child to lead a healthy lifestyle and to be involved in your community. And I thought the best way to hold a child's attention was through a book. So it took me about a year to write the book and have it um, have the, the photos drawn, the pictures drawn, and then I contacted a publisher and it was published in May of 2011. So that's sort of you know how it all began. So I saw it on Amazon. Yes, and <laughs> uh, I'm, I was looking at the ratings. It's starting to move it up, is. It up is. the uh, the ranks there. Yes. Um, it was. What was it like to write it? And you said it took you a year. A year it to did, do. and you know, it's it's about a 15-page book. People don't understand why it took me so long, but I wanted to get across very specific points because two-thirds of cancer deaths can be prevented by leading a healthy lifestyle. So I wanted to get across points on how a child can live a healthy lifestyle, and I also wanted to get across how they can help others and be involved in their community, and I didn't want it to be scary at all. So it took me a while. I kept you know, changing the way I was writing it and the message that I was relaying, and Madison, the main character, is not the character with cancer. It's really about her journey, learning how to help her friend, learning about how to live a better life for herself. Right, and that's an interesting point that I think makes your book very unique. It's, it's not about like how to deal with cancer right. it's how to deal with those and what you can do about Absolutely. it because I think the message that I got in there is 
is a couple of things. Your unconditional giving, yes, right? Absolutely. That you can that you can do when you are uh, with someone that you care a lot about. Yes. And not only what you can do for them and do for others, but yourself, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Because the big message is is how can I make sure that I set myself up for healthy living? Absolutely. Right? Yes, so I, so you definitely received the message that I was trying to get across, so absolutely. I did. Yes. And so the hope is that parents will, will get the book and read it to their children, especially if they have someone in their life who... Um, you know, it, it is afflicted with cancer. Yes, the capacity of the book has been even larger than I thought. Um, I actually was invited to a kindergarten class. I normally use the book in grades one through five, but a kindergarten class had lost a, a classmate to cancer, and the teacher invited me there to read the book as a way to sort of help them cope with it. So it's definitely, you know, been much broader than I ever could have imagined. Now, uh, the characters... Are they from anybody in real life? Do, anybody, do, they, do you get asked that question? I do all the time, and it's it's actually pretty funny. Those are the names that I would like to name my daughter should I have them oh, someday. Really? <laughs> yes, awesome. that's where they came from. All right. So, no so not only does this have an awesome message to it, and and parents will will be able to share that with their children. Yes. Uh, I'm sure people may say, "You wrote a kids book. This is awesome. How did you do that? <laughs> so how did you do that? Or can you offer any tips, people out there? Because a lot of people want to write a book. Yes. What did, what, what did you find? What would you offer someone who would like to, to take the same journey as you have with writing a book? Well, I think, you know, my message would be I wasn't someone who ever pictured myself writing a book. So you can really do anything that you set your mind to, and your life's journey can take you in a completely opposite direction than you ever imagined. And if you're someone who really has been wanting to write a book for a while, do some research on publishers, because I think that's a really big deal, too. I um, approached the, the publisher who specialized in children's educational materials. So if you get the, the correct publisher for your book, I think your chances of actually being published are much better. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay, good. So, um, what's what's next for Miss Connecticut? Your, your, your reign goes to, is it June? June 30th, there will be a new Miss Connecticut. After that, I'm a few classes shy of an MBA in healthcare management, and I'm hoping to um, someday be CFO of a hospital. That's my long-term long goal. So, I'm working towards that. So, back to work for me. And, of course, you know, I'd love to have a family down the road as well. So. And, and I can't help but ask, how at what point did you start looking at, at the Miss uh, Connecticut pageant? Not until the age of 16. Really? So I was not one of those little girls running around with a tiara on my head. And I was introduced to the organization actually right after I became involved with the American Cancer Society by a former Miss Connecticut who sort of said to me, look, you have a platform. You've been a dancer your whole life. You have a talent. Have you ever heard of the Miss America organization? Because this gives you a voice and a lot of scholarship money too. So it was a very unconventional way to get involved. It took me three tries to win Miss Connecticut. I tried at 17 and 19. I'm now 23. Um, but it was a a lot of persistence and I realized that this is a job and a job that I wanted very badly because I knew I could make an impact with it. Wow. Okay, well, you know, I thank you so much for taking time out to come thank to our show. Thank you for inviting me. This and, is wonderful. And come out and, and let us know that. Um, if, if there's anything I can do to help you get the word out, I certainly will because I'm thank in contact you. with a lot of parents. Yes, absolutely. And because, the, you know, they need to know about this book. Thank you. And it can be really helpful for families um, who have someone who's afflicted with with cancer, so um, awesome platform. Thank I'm you really very much. Glad that we had a chance to, to meet you. Same here. Thank you. Getting your children to communicate is not always easy, but what if there was another language that could help children express themselves more effectively, more often, and at a younger age? In my next segment, I'm going to interview a language instructor who teaches parents how to teach their children nonverbal communication skills. The result, she says, may be a higher self-esteem and stronger relationships in the child's life. Stay with me through the break to find out more. We'll be right back. <laughs> 